The AOC U3477PQU is a massive 34-inch ultra-widescreen monitor with a top-notch IPS panel that should ensure it has excellent image quality. What's more, it foregoes the curve of some alternatives and instead includes a fully adjustable stand and comes in at a lower price, making it arguably an even more tempting choice. Like the Philips BDM3490UC that I looked at recently, the thing that's initially most striking about this monitor is its design. Its lack of a curve means it doesn't have quite as much of an impact as the Philips, but its use of the same sort of display panel that has very thin bezels that sit behind the front pane of plastic make the whole thing look more slender than a typical screen. This is then set off nicely by an elegant brushed metal base. The rear of the screen has a slightly plasticky quality to it, but overall it still looks the part and largely feels well put together. What's more, this is a practical design too. The stand is height adjustable such that the top of the screen runs all the way from 500mm up to 627mm, and the screen can be rotated to sit in a portrait position, which makes it far easier to plug in cables, if nothing else. You can even opt to remove the stand altogether and use the standard 100x100mm visa mount with a third party monitor stand. However, while this is useful, it does mean that putting the monitor together in the first place isn't as simple as some. Connectivity is not spectacular, but all the bases are covered. You get one each of VGA, DisplayPort, HDMI and DVI. Plus there's an audio input for the speakers and headphone socket for those moments when you want to listen in private. One slight issue is that the ports are quite low down, so it's difficult to bend the cable out of sight without putting strain on the plugs and sockets. On the side there's a USB 3 hub with two USB 3 ports and two USB 2 ports. However, rather oddly, the input for the hub is also on the side, which is a slightly awkward place when it comes to cable management. Speaking of which, there's just a simple plastic clip on the back of the stand to take care of that. Aside from struggling with putting the thing together, setting this display up is simple enough thanks to the default configuration as being pretty much spot on. All I needed to do was move from the warm colour temperature setting to the normal colour temperature setting and drop the brightness to about 40 and it was pretty much ready to roll. However, like the AOC C3584FQ, it's annoying that you can't adjust brightness in the sRGB mode as that's even better than the normal colour preset when it comes to colour accuracy. In fact, the on-screen menu system as a whole is pretty clunky. The five buttons on the underside of the screen for controlling it are fine but the way they don't particularly relate to what's being shown in the bizarrely massive and pixelated menus means it's a bit slow and cumbersome to move around. Again though, like with the initial setup of the stand, it's a fairly minor inconvenience in the grand scheme of things. All of which brings us to the display itself. It measures 34 inches from corner to corner and has an ultra-wide 21 by 9 aspect ratio, with a resolution of 3440 by 1440 pixels. That provides an ideal 109 pixels per inch, meaning you won't have to use Windows scaling tools to make everything a sensible size, like you do with really high resolution screens. And normally you have to sit further back to stop things looking pixelated, like on the C3584FQ. It's an IPS panel too, so viewing angles are excellent. In fact, that's pretty much the best word to describe every aspect of this display's image quality. Colour temperature and gamma are bang on, while the claimed 1.07 billion colours it can display make for a delta E of just 0.7. That means this monitor can differentiate between the very small differences in colour, in turn making it very colour accurate. It should be noted it isn't actually Adobe RGB capable though, so those working with print quality workflows will have to look elsewhere. But for purely digital workflows and just general day-to-day -day computing, gaming and multimedia, it's excellent. Its maximum brightness of 280 nits is also ample for bright environments, while the matte finish of the front panel means reflections aren't a problem. There are two areas where it's less impressive though. The first is a fairly minor point, which is that its contrast ratio is just 892 to 1. That's still close enough to the 1000 to 1 mark that I'd normally expect of a monitor like this, and I certainly didn't notice the display looking grey and washed out, but for instance the Philips BDM3490UC managed 1100 to 1. A far bigger problem though is that input lag is high. In fact, it's also weirdly inconsistent with my input lag tester showing that it varied from as low as 24 milliseconds all the way up to 50 milliseconds. Taken as an average, that gives us an input lag of 35 milliseconds, which is two whole refreshes or frames of this 60 hertz monitor. So not only is this not a high speed 144 hertz gaming panel to begin with, but you're also getting an extra dollop of delay from that input lag. As such, this simply isn't a good choice for competitive gamers. If you're just playing single player FPS or slower paced games like RTSs and RPGs, then it'll be fine, but for those games that require split second reaction times, the screen will put you at a distinct disadvantage. One final thing before I wrap up is the speakers, which are as ropey as I've come to expect. They get to a reasonable volume, but they sound tinny and weak and have a particularly harsh, shrill quality when pushed. 
All told then, this is a great monitor. Yes, it's quite expensive with a price tag of just under £500, but right now it's just about the cheapest way of getting such a large and high quality screen with a fully adjustable stand. And the few issues it does have are minor, so long as gaming isn't your first priority.